Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nels took a nap nearly every Sunday morning at church. During the sermon, Nels and his wife Eleanor always sat in the same pew at the Little Log Church in northern Minnesota where my husband and I began our ministry. And nearly every week, as if on cue, Nels would nod off. His wife ignored him until he began to snore. Then Eleanor would give him a jab in the ribs. With a snort, he would wake up and stay awake for a minute or two, and then he would nod off again. I never quite knew how to respond when Nels would heartily shake my hand at the end of the service and say, Good sermon, Pastor. The directive to stay awake is a recurrent theme in the New Testament. We most typically get a wake-up call during the season of Advent, so these words might be a bit familiar to you and it might seem a bit off-season, because it's not Advent, that's the season that begins in the end of November, beginning of December as we start a new church year. And it is then that we hear Jesus in the Gospels, his words just ring out, keep awake, keep awake. That is the call of Advent. Well, one Advent at the Little Log Church, I was so tempted to shout out a perfectly timed, wake up! in the middle of the sermon, but I didn't dare. Keep awake, Jesus says, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Jesus, of course, is not promoting insomnia, nor is he discounting our physical need for sleep. He is speaking figuratively about a far more insidious slumber, a lack of spiritual awareness, a drowsiness that deadens us to God's activity in our lives and in our world. The Greek word for sleep is hypnos, hypnos, from which we get the word hypnosis. And this is exactly what, what the devil and the world and our sinful selves want to do to us, distract us with selfish concerns and worldly pursuits that hypnotize us into a spiritual slumber. The Apostle Paul picks up on this theme and he makes frequent use of it in just about every one of his letters to the churches. It's time for you to wake up. Paul keeps saying this. And as we heard in our text from Romans, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Paul's preaching is rich with metaphors that describe our life in Christ. And this text in particular is filled with metaphors of contrast. Did you notice that? All these contrasting words that Paul lays beside each other, wake, Sleep, night, day, lay aside, put on, darkness, light. These contrasting opposites are utilized by Paul to emphasize the transformative power of God's word in Christ. It is literally a night and day difference that Jesus makes in our lives. 
In the first chapter of Romans, Paul writes, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith. In the chapters that follow, he proclaims this gospel, this good news, which is Christ crucified, by whom our sins are forgiven and we are raised to new life. Paul's word to the church is that God has come to us in his Son, Jesus Christ, and nothing, nothing will ever be the same again. God's decisive act in history is the cross. And in the water and word of baptism, this decisive work of God is applied to us in baptism, we are joined to Christ's death and resurrection. We are marked with the cross, sealed by the Holy Spirit. As children of God and inheritors of eternal life, we are a new creation. When Paul gets to chapter 12 in Romans, he begins to unpack what all this means for our daily lives. Do not be conformed to this world, he writes, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Assured of our salvation by faith alone, we are now free to discern and heed God's will, which is to love and serve our neighbor, the commandment that fulfills all the others, to love our neighbor. By virtue of our baptism, we live in two worlds. And it's really important that we understand this. As a new creation, we live in the new world. This new world is the kingdom of God. Yet we also live in the old world, the secular world of this life, where our daily vocations are lived out, where we love and serve our neighbor, where we work and play, where we live and die. God is still ruler of this secular world, but it is not Christ's kingdom. The old world will end. Christ's kingdom will endure forever. The temptation for Christians is to be hypnotized, that is, lulled into a spiritual sleep, by the things of this old world, or deluded into thinking that this world is the only reality that really exists. This sleep can either draw us into the darkness of guilt, despair, or fear, or it can draw us into the shadows of greed, pride, and self-centeredness. It is a sleep that blinds us to the counterfeit lights of materialism, consumerism, success, and fame, and the means and methods of this world to attain them. So wake up. Wake up. Along with the churches of Paul's day, we need to be roused from sleep and reminded of who we are and what God has done for us in Christ. You, beloved, are not in darkness, Paul says to us, for you are children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake. Those who are in the dark, as Paul speaks of it, are those who live in sin, held captive by the law, without God's word of forgiveness in Christ. We are children of the day because we live in the light of Christ's forgiveness, his word of promise. This is the light that shines in the darkness that the darkness cannot overcome. Once you were darkness, Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, but now in the Lord you are light. So live as children of light. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. 
Therefore, Paul continues, sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Jesus' word raises the dead, literally. Dead in our sin, we are raised to new life in Christ. It is a life lived in love and forgiveness. It is a life that lays aside the works of darkness, sinful behaviors, and immoral lifestyles. Paul recounts some of those in his text. It is a life that now shines with the light of Christ. The time is now, Paul tells us, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Now in Paul's day, many thought that Christ's return was imminent, even within their lifetime. This was their expectation. Well, over 2,000 years have passed, and still we wait. No wonder we fall asleep, huh? Yet, every day, Christ's second coming is one day closer. Have you thought about that? So yes, salvation is nearer to us today than it was yesterday. As children of the day, we lean into the future, living with hope, because God's promises are sure and certain. Living a life of daily repentance, remembering our baptism, we put on the Lord Jesus Christ every day, knowing that our sins are forgiven and we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. So wake up, church. Wake up. No nodding off during the sermons either. <laughs> the night is far gone. The day is near. We are children of light and children of the day. We walk in the light as our Lord is in the light. So stay awake and shine with the light of Christ. Amen.